There is nobody, and I mean nobody, who is stopping the Dallas Mavericks right now. The Mavericks pushed the streak to five, this time going into Houston, where the Rockets had won six consecutive games and slapping the taste out of their mouth, 137-123. The Mavericks pretty much controlled this entire game. Yes, Houston made a bit of a run there in the late third quarter and the start of the fourth quarter. You know, when Luka and KP were resting because once we had our guys out there, once we actually had our guys, they couldn't do anything with us. The Rockets are a good team. They're a formidable team. They're also a very unlikable team. But you know what? Credit to James Harden. Two for 15 is pretty impressive in the NBA. Now, yeah, he got 30 points, and if he attempted anything other than a three-pointer, he was actually, I think, a perfect 9-for-9 nine nine on the game. So, hey, in the future, maybe attempt more of those. All the same, the, the Harden-Westbrook combination could do nothing with Luka, and to a lesser extent, even KP and, hey, Tim Hardaway Jr. I said it, keep him going. If he's on the hot streak right now, keep him in, keep starting him. I know Seth came back from a couple games out with an illness, I had no problem sticking with the hot hand and sticking with Hardaway Jr. And he gives you his first 30-point game as a Maverick. Shoots 10 of 18, which is quite solid. Now, he, he went a little cold late. He had 27 at the end of three. Only got three more the rest of the way. But you know what? I don't care. When he is playing in that form, when he is on fire, he is a perfect third man to Luka and KP. Now, do I think that's the guy you're going to get? And do I want to bank on that long term? Hell no. But does it work for right now while he's on this hot streak? Yeah. Yeah, the Mavericks are cooking right now. Like, yes, the streak of 140-point games comes to an end. Barely. 137 in this case. But you know what? The Mavericks are the number one rated offense in the NBA. And that's going to happen when you go for 140-plus, 140-plus, and 137 today. That's going to happen. But you know what else is propelling them forward? It's Luka Doncic just doing insane things. 41 points. He goes into Houston on a big, big stage, drops 41 points, 10 assists, 6 boards, shoots over 50% on the game, 15 of 29, gets a block, couple steals. He showed out. Now, I know, again, Harden, 32, 11 and 9, nearly had himself a triple-double. It was a triple-double, and he was all that worked for Houston. But you know what happened? Dallas eventually just said, you know what? We're not going to let James Harden beat us. We're going to trap and we're going to force the ball out of his hands because Russell Westbrook is back there shooting 22% from three. 22. Like, he is in a better situation now in terms of wide open looks and an abundance of quality looks from three than he's ever had in his career, or at least that he's had the last five years or so. And how is he producing this year? 22%. Dallas just stood back and basically dared him. All right, shoot it. Now, when he attacked the rim... He was better. 23 points, 6 assists, 5 boards, 8 of 20 shooting. Like, on paper, not a terrible game, but certainly not the kind of game where you notice him. Houston doesn't have a whole lot in their bench. I will say Capella had himself a beast of a day. 21 points, 22 rebounds. That's his second 2020 game this year. Also 3 assists on 10 of 16 shooting. But the thing is, you didn't really notice him all that much, unless he was hacking the crap out of someone like KP or Maxi or whatever. What you did notice is he got a lot of cleanup there because of Harden and uh, Westbrook. But Dallas, everything is clicking with this team right now. Just about everything. Like 85 to 90% of the entire team is firing on all cylinders right now. And it's not just Luka. You have KP. He still hasn't gotten his outside shot quite right. He's still not getting the low post game or the mid-range game quite where we want it. But he got himself a lot, a lot of putbacks, a lot of offensive boards, or excuse me, just rebounds in general. A couple alley-oop connections. He's still contesting shots and making his presence felt there. He's changing the game, and he's playing fantastic. This game opened with three straight turnovers by the Rockets, and the Mavericks were off to the races on every one of them. Like, Dallas, Dallas was dialed in, and KP was a big part of that disruption in the first five minutes of the game. And... God forbid, or rather, God help the rest of the NBA whenever KP gets that jump shot back right, whenever you can set him and unleash him anywhere, dude, his presence right now with Luka is insane, and it's just getting better. He's figured out his role on this team right now as he adapts, and he's playing at that 
like to that level and in that role to a very high degree. And it's, it's really impressive to see. Uh, I, I called out Tim Hardaway Jr. as well, shooting the ball very well. Hey, credit to him. I have been, if you've watched this channel before, you've seen I have been very, very critical of Tim Hardaway Jr. throughout his entire stint as a Maverick. And I still contend that you're not going to get a lot of these games, but when you got a streak of them going right now, when he's shooting with that much confidence to the point where he's able to score off the dribble, he's able to get floaters in the rim, and he's able to contribute in other areas other than just spot up threes, you have to take advantage of that. Like, I'm not buying in and saying he's my long-term third-man option. In fact, I said the exact opposite of that early on. But when he's got this kind of hot hand, you would be a fool not to utilize it to the max. That's why he got those minutes instead of Curry in this game. That and Curry coming back from a couple-game absence. But lots of lots of great stuff going on with the Mavericks right now. Some great history as well. Uh, Luka becomes just the fourth player in NBA history with four consecutive games of at least, what was it, 30 points and 10 assists. That doesn't sound right. I think it's, uh, yeah, I guess 30 points and 10 assists in four consecutive games. He joined MJ, James Harden, and Russell Westbrook in that cap, in that company. That is pretty staggering. When you can join that kind of elite company, company, no Maverick obviously has ever done it, but when you have that kind of company, uh, three of those guys are kings of triple doubles, and then you, of course, have MJ, the greatest ever, so, yeah, that's pretty, pretty phenomenal stuff that he's accomplishing in this case. And this whole team is feeding off of him. Like I said, when Houston made their run in the late third quarter, it was because KP and Luka were out of the game. Yeah, the Mavericks bench played great. I mean, geez, way better than Houston's bench. Houston's bench didn't score its first, like, field goal of the game until, like, 10-something left in the, in the fourth quarter. They had two points at the foul line in the first half. And then Austin Rivers got a couple buckets back to back in the fourth quarter when Houston trimmed it all the way down to like six or four or whatever at the time. I think they got to within five, maybe once within three before Dallas really reasserted itself and took over. But Luka Doncic is just getting to the rim at will. He's finishing through crazy contact. He got whacked in the face a couple times in this game and he finished. I mean, that is that is concentration, that is elite ability he's been shooting the ball very well he was good last year shooting the ball within four feet of the rim he is like 65 66 percent this year shooting now he missed a couple of gimmies early in the first half and you know one of them was on a fast break and the other i think was on a both might have been a fast break i digress the point being a little shaky at the beginning in that particular category, but when you see what he ended up doing as the game wore on and the kind of contact he was absorbing and finishing uh, finishing the play and getting to the line for an and one, it was really, really impressive on his part. And this was a statement game. Luca knows he's in the national conversation for MVP, and he walked in knowing, hey, James Harden is the other guy in that. He was an MVP two years ago. He was the runner-up last year, and he's averaging 38 points per game this year. So there you go. He's a guy who is, I think, the fourth most points per game in NBA history is what he's averaging right now. I mean, it's insane what he's doing. But he's held six points below his average, not really because of anything Dallas did until the end when they started just forcing the ball completely out of his hands. But in general, uh, he, he did not shoot the ball well. He's been very – he'll shoot a million shots. And like I said, two of 15 for three. He'll shoot a million of them. He has no conscience. But if they're not falling, then you should be able to control the game. And that's what Dallas did. Let's see here. Luka, 15 of 29 from the field. I said that earlier. He wasn't great from three. Five of 14. Six of eight at the line. But he's a plus 21 for the game here. Hardaway was a plus 12. KP was a plus 32. Like So anyone who wants to point to saying, oh, well, Clint Capella, how can you say KP had a great game defensively if Capella had 21 and 22? I mean, look at just look at the plus minus in this case. Yeah, Capella got a lot of dirty work and a lot of putbacks like that, but he was a minus 11 for the game. KP was a plus 32. Now, you can say plus minus isn't the ultimate indicator, but KP's presence was way more felt in this game, I felt, than uh, Capella's was. So Dallas is cooking with fire right now. They're going to have, I think, next up is the Clippers, I believe. I know I have that on the board but I wanted to double check just to make sure. So if I'm wrong, I can at the very least correct it. No, it is back at home 
not on the road. So I'm, I need that. That part is incorrect. I need to update that. It's back at the Double A C where they will be playing the Clippers. Let me see here. Uh, uh, uh. Look at this live updates on the fly. Isn't this channel amazing? But yeah, Dallas is cooking with fire right now, and they have a chance to really, really continue making headway. Five straight, one of the hotter teams in the NBA. And let me see here. I want to see, not that it really matters right now, but where they are in the standings. They were fifth entering the day. They currently sit at third as of right now, about 5.15 for this recording. Uh, so only the Lakers and Nuggets are ahead of them. Dallas 11-5 and five on the year. Three games back of the Lakers at number one. So yeah, there's a lot to like in this game. Dallas is 78 points as well in the first half were the most points they've had in a single half. This is what the broadcast said. I I swear I remember there being a game where Dallas had like 84 at half, like around 2004, but they insist that this is the 78 is the most points Dallas has ever had in any given half since 96. So, really interesting there as well. Dallas just cooking 45 points in the first quarter like they were just in control of this game throughout and it, except for that little stretch there at the end of the third quarter there was little to nothing Houston could seemingly do to slow them down uh let me touch on some of these stats here uh some of the field goal percentages and all that I realize I didn't mention that earlier as I was talking about these teams Dallas shot 49 percent compared to 46 percent for Houston 39 percent from three Houston only 10 of 44 in that department for 23 percent Dallas took just as many threes, but, you know, connected on seven more of them, so that's going to help. Free throws, Dallas Dallas was 22 of 20 at the line for 79%, but it felt like they were struggling a little bit. They were missing some timely free throws. Not that it really mattered in the grand scheme, but even when Luka first came in, he gets an immediate and one, and it goes to a seven-point game. He has a chance to complete the three-point play. He misses that free throw, and Houston comes back and gets a bucket immediately. So there, there were ones like that where you're like, ah, you notice them a little more. Houston, 74% in that category, 23 of 31. So Dallas basically matched them there in terms of 22 makes compared to 23 and on three fewer free throw attempts. Turnovers, Houston had those three immediately and then didn't turn it over again. Had like maybe one more turnover for like 90% of the rest of the game. And then it was late where it started getting sloppy and Dallas pulled away. So Houston ends up with 11. Dallas has 14 on the game. Dallas out assists Houston, 28-26. Uh, lost the rebounding battle, but by a slim margin, 47 to 52. Dallas 12 offensive boards, Houston 14. Again, that's great Capella territory there. Five blocks for the Mavericks compared to two for Houston. And uh, Dallas 22 fouls compared to 26 for Houston. So this uh, this is going to get some people's attention. I mean, I don't know if the Knicks games were like rock bottom for this team trying to figure itself out, but a lot of guys are playing out of their mind right now. Tim Hardaway Jr., obviously, his best three-game stretch as a Maverick. KP has really found a lot of things out, even though his his thing he's most known for isn't really clicking just yet. He's got a lot of other stuff working for him, and he's figured out how to basically play uh, at tip-top shape in every other a area. Energy plays, blocking shots, contesting, alley-oop dunks, and all of that, and he's cutting well to the basket. Luka's finding him. DeLon Wright's finding him. You're getting guys setting him up for easy jams. And as a result of it, the team's feeding off it, and I think he's feeding off of it a little bit. I wonder what KP's three-point percentage was. I didn't see him take a ton of threes in this game. Uh, five three-point attempts on the game. That's a better number, I think, for KP shooting threes right now. Two of five overall on that. So I'm, ha I'm happy with that for KP. He seems like he's settling in 34 minutes for Luka and KP, respectively, compared to 41 for Harden and 38 for Westbrook. Good God, man. So Houston's bench scored six points between Rivers and McLemore. Wait, no, there's a little bit more, but it was garbage time. Um, Hartenstein and Clark gave them five more. Houston's bench is the worst in the NBA. The Mavericks coming into this game were the third best bench in terms of points per game this year. So, hey, what are those things we talked about? Before the season started, we talked about the Mavericks bench being one of its greatest strengths. That has That has really played out as we said it would rebounding the ball uh other than Luca, you don't really have a one guy who rebounds great um I mean KP's doing it this year I'm talking about coming into the year you didn't have that guy now KP has kind of established himself that way as well averaging a career best um I don't know his number off the top of my head his average rebounds per game 
but he's playing better in that regard than he has at any point in his career. So there's a lot to look forward to for what this team is capable of here. Uh, KP is... Looks like 9.1 boards this year for KP. So I actually would have guessed it was 10, but he's 9.1. That doesn't include this game. Um, and 18 and a half points. So you want to see that number trend in the right direction. Obviously, it'll get a little boost from this game. But there's a lot to look forward to with this team. I know, like, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit here, so forgive me. But uh, I'm incredibly excited about this team. This feels like a very different team, even from what we saw just a week and a half ago. And they can contend with anybody. They can beat anybody, it seems like. And it doesn't even really matter if it's home or away. Like, they're going to be tough environments. Obviously, Boston pulled away from them late. Uh, they lost a heartbreaker they shouldn't have to the Lakers. They lost a heartbreaker they probably shouldn't have to the Trailblazers, who have fallen off a bit this year. But it's opening up. Like, there's so long to go, and there are so many things that could happen that you don't want to make any kind of prediction saying, like, oh, this is a playoff team. All I can tell you is right now, if they can sustain a, a level of play somewhere around what they're doing now, they are absolutely a playoff team. Like, Portland has fallen off. Uh, the Pelicans got off to a really slow start without Zion, obviously. Um, the Spurs have fallen off. You have like a bunch of teams that were in, in your way was the perception and they've just fallen off. Uh, the Kings got off to a very slow start as well. Let me see. Obviously the Warriors is another one that people were still talking about them being probably a seven seed or something. So a lot of those teams you needed to kind of clear out of the way for you seem like they've cleared out of the way because the Kings are the closest out of the ones I was just talking about, and they're six and eight. Eight and eight is your eight seeded uh, Timberwolves. So there's there's a lot to look at right now. Like one through six is pretty much separated by tiebreaker scenarios um, for the most part. Like you have the Lakers at fourteen and two, the Nuggets at eleven and three, Mavericks at eleven and five, Clippers at eleven and five, Jazz at eleven and five, and now the Rockets at eleven and six. But the Rockets, hmm, interesting. According to this, the Rockets have lost three straight now. But I was told they were the best team in the West. Huh. Interesting. So, yes, we will see where this season takes the Mavericks. I am incredibly excited, though. Um, there, There's not much else to say, man. They're going to have their next game now against the Clippers. That will be probably a night from now. That's going to be Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, November 26, 7:30. I'm glad that uh it's a because it's in Dallas, it's still a 7:30 game. The only time I get beat over the head by the late starts is when you're talking about east or excuse me, west coast games and suddenly you're having to play tip off at 9:30 or something like that. Then it's a beating for me as well. But 7:30, I can knock that out easy for you. So Look forward to more content. Like this video, share if you want to support us on Patreon. Hey, you would uh, make my day. Until next time, that's going to do it for my time. Thank you guys so much. And remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.